For years, the database market was steady and steadily boring. As virtualization went mainstream, organizations began to rethink their database strategies and ask questions like, should I run Postgres in VMware? Now implicit in that question was another drill down question. In other words, can VMware itself handle my critical applications and is Postgres the right solution to optimize my infrastructure estate? Now history has shown that was both a safe and good bet for organizations looking to leverage open source innovation and lower their costs. At the same time, new workloads were emerging that were pushing the boundaries of existing relational database technologies that were designed primarily for transactional workloads. So-called systems of engagement and systems of analytics were growing at rates much faster than traditional OLTP workloads. Once again, people asked the question, should I think about running these new workloads on Postgres? Now the answer came from the community response that saw the need to extend the open source platform to handle these emerging workloads. The database market suddenly got really interesting as these new applications emerged. Multiple data sources were combined and analyzed to interpret sentiment from social media, get consumers to buy something before they move to another website, triangulate data to fight fraud, predict weather patterns, ensure drug provenance, and dozens of other use cases. Then when cloud went mainstream, Similar questions were asked about Postgres. And once again, the open source community responded to accommodate and extend the platform for the cloud. And now Kubernetes is all the rage. When should I run Postgres in Kubernetes? <laughs> Similar theme, right? Open source, community, innovation, lowering license costs, minimizing lock-in, maximizing op optionality, avoiding too much database sprawl, confidence to support new workloads, these are the factors that customers tell us they use generally to choose a database and Postgres specifically. In reality, you know, it's usually pretty obvious what the right strategic fit is for a platform, but buyers want to make sure they have headroom for innovation. Now they do want to push the envelope on new data types while at the same time managing their risks. And that's where Postgres and the Postgres community in my view has thrived. It's become the ideal solution for what I call the fat middle of workloads that are increasingly diverse, but require a cost-effective and stable approach that can scale. These are some of the themes we heard in the morning keynotes from Suzette Kent, former federal CIO, who laid down her knowledge on transformation, leadership, and technology modernization. And then EDB CEO Ed Boyajian gave his annual keynote address and talked about the power of data. Data, as we know, is growing at a mind-bending exponential rate. It'll make the 2010s look meager by comparison. My big takeaway from his talk really were around using technology to extract value more quickly. I think this is going to become the new metric in the industry, which basically is every industry is a, is a data-oriented platform now. Yes, software is eating the world, data is eating software. In other words, the new KPI is how long does it take to go from idea to monetization? That is going to become critical in my opinion over this next decade. Ed made what I thought was a critical point, And that is you really can't easily define the future. Industries are transforming right before our eyes. And his premise was that you have to pick a data platform that can evolve in unpredictable times. Now, as I pointed out earlier, the Postgres community has stepped up to changing environments for decades. And that really was a point Boyajian hit on pretty hard. Replatforming is happening. And he made a convincing argument that Postgres and EDB will be part of that future with a significant investment in advancing Postgres with hundreds of engineers on the task. He talked about three growth vectors. First, growth in new workloads. He, he made the claim that around 50% of new EDB customers are deploying new applications. Second, he talked about legacy migrations as another driver. And third was cloud, both traditional compute in the cloud, but also managed services and DBAS, database as a service. Of course, he also talked about, and there's been a lot of discussion at Vision 2021 about Kubernetes and developers. Big push there. Let me give you my thoughts on that. First, the Kubernetes community is really focused on security and has made a lot of progress in the past 24 months. I think the second point there is developers, 
They want simplification, and Kubernetes brings that to a greater degree. And it's maturing with more production-ready capabilities. It's just some basic blocking and tackling, like not releasing with unstable code. But it's still early days, and the community has some work to do on things like backwards compatibility, for example. And the release cadence of Kubernetes, it's still pretty frequent, which means you got to update scripts and APIs and the like. So, you know, remember, Postgres practitioners, they're used to very high levels of stability. So you got to be a little bit careful there. You got to go experiment because you want to take advantage of containers benefits, but with, within, within Postgres, but you got to make sure you have the right change management in place and you got the resources to be on top of that. The bottom line is Kubernetes is still a toddler, but it's growing up fast. And I have no doubt it will become a staple of the Postgres stack. Now I'll end where I started and that's the market. It's gone from staid and uninteresting you know, years ago to one, that, one of the most dynamic sectors of IT infrastructure software. And Ed Poyajian talked about the, the total available market, the TAM and the valuations that we're seeing today. The market's enormous. I mean, if you just think about traditional database, it's probably 60 to $70 billion. But when you add in all the data and data clouds and decentralized data architectures and eventually edge computing, the market is potentially hundreds of billions of dollars in value for data platforms. So the last thing I'll say about Vision 21 is there's some great content here that spans both the business discussion and also deep practitioner material. And it's useful, it has very useful how to's that both educate and inspire. So sit back and enjoy the show. This is Dave Vellante and you're watching theCUBE's continuous coverage of Postgres Vision 21 brought to you by EDB. Thanks for watching.